Welcome to the Pacific Wayfinder. This is a special series celebrating the 20th anniversary of RAMSI, the Regional Assistance Mission to Solomon Islands, celebrating our region united. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, Solomon Islands descended into civil conflict in a period known as the Tensions. The Solomon Islands government asked its Pacific family for help. The Pacific answered the call. The Regional Assistance Mission to Solomon Islands, RAMSI, arrived in peace on July 24, 2003 and departed in friendship on June 30, 2017. Thousands of police, military, and civilian personnel drawn from across the Pacific. 15 contributing countries. 14 years. Seven Ramsey Special Coordinators. One very special place. Solomon Islands. My name is Aka Rimon, and I'm your host. And I've got with me today my co-host, Dr. Henry Ivorature and Professor Dave Peebles. Hi, Dave. Hi, Henry. You were in Solomon Islands recently um, interviewing people for this series. Tell us about our guest today. Yes. Now, we've got a really great uh, guest uh, today. Her name is Gina Kakea. She is the president of the Media Association of Solomon Islands and also a working journalist. Um, I think uh, Gina's story really brings out the uh, everyday bravery that uh, people in Solomon Islands demonstrated in the period of the tensions. For me, coming from Pat Malaita, Pat now, so it's really quite uh, tricky for me, yeah, because um, my mom's from Malaita and my dad's from Gorokanal and the ethnic tension basically was between Malaita and Gorokanal, and here I was caught in the middle. Um, we resided outside of Honiara, and actually I started work in 2000 for SIBC. I was on my way to work. I just carried a duffel bag. That's the only possession that I have with me. I uh, went to SIBC, started work, and the tension happened. I mean, things escalated. Uh, I was not able to go back home nor was I able to see my dad. Um, he was on the other side of the border. Uh, he's from Gorokanal, so he cannot come to the city. So it's quite of a mixed feeling for me back then. Uh, my boss, he used to say that I should change my name because my name is uh, Regina Kekea, and then it sounded more like Tuharo Keke. So he was saying that, oh, you should change your name because it's, it's quite risky having your name so close to Haro Keke and you being part of Goro Canal, uh, there might be repercussions, but I decided to use my name. There's no way I can go about changing my name. That's who I was. So, yeah, so it's quite a mixed uh, feelings for me back then because I was able to work, fortunately. Uh, my mom being from Malaita, so most of the Malaitans back then, they knew who my family was and um, my parents and some of them are my, were my relatives, really, my uncles, my cousins, my friends. Uh, but it's just unfortunate that things happened the way it was back then. So when Ramsey arrived, um, it was quite a relief for us, actually. And um, having Ramsey uh, arrive um, June 23 years, uh, 20 years ago now, uh, it, there was a live coverage, live broadcast, and everyone was excited. Uh, we were all excited uh, to be part of the uh, the occasion and also bringing the good news to the people, really, that finally we have support coming um, because it's a bit chaotic back then. And for us, working in such an environment was not really healthy for us as well. Uh, but then we saw Ramsey and then there were you know, people were really feeling a bit more uh, at peace. Uh, we were able to do our job without fear, you know. So, yeah, I guess it was a relief for, for us. Uh, Ramsey, I think one thing which I saw uh, was that we it, they were able to do some of the things that 
we were not able to achieve uh, once we, if we were left to do it alone, uh, with the support that we have, not only in terms of uh, law and order, but also in the also in the administrative uh, sector, media, for instance, um, through Solmas, uh, we were able to pull ourselves together uh, and get ourselves um, on our feet uh, with the support that we have because uh, I remember during the tension days teachers were not getting paid, public servants were not being paid. Um, luckily for us we were still able to have a fortnight salary so it, it's like coming out from a deep hole actually so having this sort of support there guiding us, helping us through the dark days was uh, something which we would not have been able to do alone. Most times everywhere Ramsey or whoever represents Ramsey wherever they go they will usually get a good reception from uh, people basically because uh, people know Ramsey from 2003 when they first came in and then law and order was restored, peace uh, was restored so sort of um, uh, people hold them closely, dearly to their hearts, so we, we can see that everywhere where they, where they go, children, like, oh, Ramsey, and then run into the road, or, you know, when they play and they saw a truck with the Ramsey going by, and they will say, Ramsey, and then you know, just wave their hand. I think the opportunities are many for us, the challenges as well for us. What we in Solomon Islands face now, basically, are domestic issues, which only we ourselves can sort out. Um, Australia, New Zealand, they are there to help us, but we just need to sort ourselves. Uh, we need to put, pull ourselves together and, you know, become a strong United Solomon Islands because at the end of the day, uh, this is our home. Uh, only we ourselves are our worst enemies as well. So Solomon Islands, we just need to really work hard in making sure that we look after our country and we also do what's uh, what we need to what needs to be done for our children and our future generations otherwise we'll continue to uh, end up where we were like 20 years ago so it's really up to us in Solomon Islands really to do what's best for our country. Our in-studio guest today is James Baddeley, who was Ramsey's special coordinator between 2004 and 2006. James has held a number of important diplomatic positions, including High Commissioner to Solomon Islands, Ambassador to East Timor, and High Commissioner to Fiji. He is currently a Distinguished Policy Fellow at ANU. James was the special coordinator during a very interesting period of Ramsey. After the initial wins, James really had the task of setting the mission up for long-term success. So we look forward to hearing his story today. Welcome, James. Thanks very much, Aka. What did it mean for Ramsey to have Pacific police and military officers drawn from across the whole Pacific? There came a day uh, in my time as special coordinator when every single member of the Pacific Islands Forum had uh, announced its intention or were providing um, personnel to the participating police force. And it was a great day for the obvious reason that, that all members were now part of this mission, but particularly because when you bear in mind that some, uh, some members of the forum uh, have very small police services, and to contribute one or two officers to uh, an operation like Ramsey was really a, uh, an important sacrifice, a really uh, a significant gesture to make. But what it said to us on the ground was that the leaders of all the countries in the forum now have confidence in Ramsey. They have confidence that Ramsey is doing good work, um, that it is... Um, it is meeting the need of Solomon Islands um, and hopefully that it's being well led. So I think um, both symbolically but also in a very practical sense, this was, um, I think it was a great achievement. It, it really represented, I think, one of the most comprehensive uh, examples of regional security cooperation uh, in the history of the um, of the Pacific Islands Forum, so I guess that's why I 
I, I always say it was one of my my most memorable days um, as a special coordinator when that, that news came through that that everyone was part of the operation. James, could you share with us some of your other highlights as special coordinator? Sure. Well, it was obviously a very busy time for everyone who was a member of Ramsey. Um, we had a lot of visitors, our, our political leaders from all the contributing countries uh, were frequent visitors. Um, we, I personally spent a lot of time uh, working with uh, Solomon Islands government ministers, senior officials, um, also working with other Ramsey colleagues. The thing though that I really, that sticks in my memory is our meetings with ordinary Solomon Islanders. Uh, we made special efforts particularly to visit uh, parts of the country that had been affected by or most affected by the, uh, the tensions. That included villages in Malaita, but also on the weather coast of Guadalcanal. And I, I was privileged on one occasion to accompany the Vanuatu Prime Minister, uh, Honourable Ham Linney at the time, uh, to the weather coast uh, of uh, of Guadalcanal, we we took him to uh, a village called Mabanakira, where Ramsey had a police post established with uh, Ni Vanuatu police serving there. This had been one of the areas that had been most badly affected uh, during the um, the times of the of the ethnic tensions. It was an extremely moving visit. Uh, the prime minister himself was. Uh, was moved by the stories that he heard from Solomon Islanders that he spoke to and, and in fact was brought to tears on this occasion. But also tears of sorrow for hearing these, these awful stories. But I think also he was so proud that his own police officers, the members of the Vanuatu uh, police force, were representing Vanuatu, were part of the regional effort um, to help bring back hope uh, to Solomon Islands. And I remember just being very deeply touched myself at, at, uh, at witnessing that and being being part of that. So I think, as I say, the, the, our, our ability to, uh, to talk to Solomon Islanders in all different parts of the country, um, for me, really brought home the reality of, of what our work was, that yes, we were working with the government of Solomon Islands, um, but we really we were thinking of the of the people of Solomon Islands, and we're very conscious all the time that uh, that we were ultimately accountable uh, to the people of Solomon Islands. There were also some challenging times, of course, during your period as a special coordinator, and uh, very sadly, two young men, Adam Dunning and uh, Jamie Clark, lost their lives as part of their service to Ramsey. I just wondered if you could share a little bit about how those deaths affected the mission. You're absolutely right that that um, those were two very tragic uh, incidents. They were separate incidents. Uh, in the first, Adam Dunning, who was an AFP protective services officer, he was killed in the line of duty. Um, he was in a vehicle that was patrolling uh, late at night uh, around Honiara and the, his vehicle was fired at. Uh, so that was a deliberate act. Uh, it was clearly a shocking event uh, for his colleagues, uh, for all of Ramsey, uh, and I, th I am can confidently say for Solomon Islands in general, not to mention uh, his family back in Australia, uh, for whom that was an irreparable loss. Uh, so certainly that everyone uh, was uh, was in shock for for some time. That that uh, incident occurred close to Christmas, which is ordinarily a time of uh, peace and and goodwill. Um, there was an immediately strong response, both from our own political leaderships in Ramsey 
to reaffirm their commitment to the operation, but also from uh, the leadership of Solomon Islands and the community uh, in general to say, we hope this does not um, uh, deflect you from your task. Um, we, you know, we desperately want Ramsey to remain. We are so sorry that this has happened. The, the second incident um, involved um, uh, a young man, Jamie Clark. He was a member of the Australian Army. His death was accidental, um, but it was no less tragic for all that. Uh, it is at any time. It's, it's uh, an awful tragedy to lose um, uh, someone who has uh, travelled outside their country uh, to serve overseas. Uh, and that was an equal shock um, to the operation as well. Again, government of Solomon Islands and uh, uh, community leaders, church leaders, all were uh, at, at great pains to express their condolences uh, and but also their hope that, you know, again, this did not deflect uh, Ramsey from, from its task. The fact that uh, these two young men lost their lives, uh, really that's, um, in one way, it cements the commitment of, uh, of the countries that contributed to Ramsey uh, and, and just underline the fact that, um, that they were, here were two people whose, whose lives were taken away from them uh, unexpectedly, tragically, uh, but it was in a good cause. Uh, they were there to help Solomon Islands and Solomon Islanders. Another challenge was the serious rioting mm. uh, in Honiara in 2006. What lessons did Ramsey take from that experience? Yes, well, uh, in, in, of course, in 2006, there was a national election in the Solomon Islands. Uh, this was the first election that had been held since Ramsey arrived uh, in 2003. When the election of the Prime Minister was announced, it was, a, in fact, a, quite an unpopular choice uh, amongst the crowds that had assembled around Parliament. And um, there was uh, quite a rowdy demonstration uh, which... Uh, involved some stone throwing uh, and then moved on to uh, more violent acts, burning of vehicles, and uh, the situation uh, pretty quickly got out of hand and involved uh, a lot of destruction and violence over the course of a couple of days. I don't think there's any doubt that the police would have tactical lessons that they would learn about how to manage crowd behaviour in Solomon Islands. Remember that uh, Solomon Islands was a post-conflict state in 2006. It had been through several years of, of really uh, serious troubles, um, starting in around in the, in the late 1990s. And, you know, one of the lessons right around the world is that it is very hard for countries to emerge from conflict and that in some senses uh, post-conflict countries um, always face the risk of reverting back into, uh, into conflict. Uh, so in the end, what happened in 2006 um, in the riots in Solomon Islands was an awful disaster. Um, it was a shock to everybody. Uh, I think people had assumed that uh, when Ramsey arrived and, and the law and order situation worked itself out, that that was it. Um, so it was a reminder that, of course, Solomon Islands problems weren't solved, uh, that, that there were still grievances, um, that in people's hearts there were still, um, maybe there were still resentments, there were still... Um, unfulfilled expectations, hopes, grievances even. Um, one of the, if it's positive, if it's possible to take 
uh, look at the silver lining mm. uh, in that situation. No one produced guns. So, so weapons mm. did not come back into the equation uh, in 2006. So I think it's best to keep those events in, in their proper historical perspective mm. um, as a sign, as a, as a reminder that, uh, um, as I say, Solomon's was a, a post-conflict state. You've written about you know, police officers who served in Ramsey and how they were able to take back home to their national forces, what they learned at, at Ramsey, and, mm. and also that Ramsey contributed to a sense of broader police family, broader Pacific police family. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Towards the end of, of Ramsey, we wanted to ask the question, well, there have been hundreds of police officers from Pacific Island countries who've served in Ramsey. How did that service affect those police police officers? So we, we did a survey uh, involving uh, as many Pacific Island countries as we could. We, we travelled personally to... Uh, to um, half a dozen countries. We also did some online surveys in some countries where, that we couldn't reach and asked uh, police officers who had been in Ramsey, what was your experience? Uh, what lessons do you take home from that? Has that affected the way that um, you do your own work? Uh, have you kept your network going? Um, uh, we also asked uh, female police officers, what was your experience? Have you taken home lessons into your own police service? Uh, do you think that um, that you have been able to influence the way your police service works? So all of those questions. So we got a lot of answers. I guess the, the short description of what we found was that for the vast majority of uh, Pacific Islanders who worked in Ramsey as, as as part of the participating police force, it was the professional highlight of their life. Right. We asked them, for instance, you know, if if you had another opportunity like this, would you sign up again? And the overwhelming majority said absolutely they would. They said to us that they really appreciated uh, the opportunity uh, to contribute to an, to help a neighbour. So that sense of uh, of belonging was very important to them. They really enjoyed the opportunity of working with colleagues from other countries, of getting to know those colleagues. And in some cases, they kept up those networks after they went home through Facebook groups and, and things like that. Uh, they enjoyed the opportunity to hone their own professional skills uh, working in another country. They enjoyed the opportunity to show to Australian and New Zealand police that they had particular skills, particularly, for instance, in the area of, I suppose we'd call them cultural competence. Um, so that police officers from countries, particularly Vanuatu, Papua New Guinea, who were very conversant with that they could adapt quickly to Solomon Islands Pigeon. When we went back, some of us went back to Honiara in 2017, at the end of Ramsey, uh, that was celebration hosted by the Solomon Islands government. And I ran across um, four uh, Nivanuatu police that I knew, and they had paid their own way to fly from Vanuatu to Honiara to be part of those celebrations. And I really think that underlines just that sense of accomplishment and yeah. pride that um, people felt in having been part of, of that operation. Well, we will be talking to some of those police officers and they will be reflecting that Dave has been working very hard to um, get them to contribute to the series. So I mean, it's really hard work to hear that uh, mm. from, from you, James. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned the women because they were uh, incredible part of the Ramsey operations and two of them came from Kiribati. So. Well, thank you, James. It's been a great honor to speak um, with you today and to hear how passionate you continue to be about um, Ramsey. Pleasure. 
Our next guest is Tuloman Neroni Slate, who is the Secretary General of the Pacific Islands Forum between 2008 and 2014, a key period in the history of RAPS. Now, Henry, I believe Tuloma is your old boss from when you were working at the Pacific Islands Forum. Um, is that true? And what was it like working for Tuloma? Dave, indeed, it's, that's true. I, um, the, Tuloma was my boss. He had uh, uh, taken over from the late Greg Irwin, uh, who unfortunately passed away uh, while holding the fort uh, as Secretary General. Tuiloma is a is is very honest person. If he doesn't know the subject matter, he will tell you that he doesn't know what the subject matter is about. But he will make the effort mm -hmm. to understand it and be informed. Uh, he's also very approachable and very easy to work with. Uh, he's a man, as we know, of great wisdom and very intelligent. Uh, and uh, a very great person uh, to have worked with. And I'm really honored to have served uh, at the forum during his time as Secretary General. Uh, well, thank you both uh, for a start for those very kind uh, words uh, you offered. Um, Thank you, in particular, Henry. Um, the um, absolute uh, pleasure and privilege to have served with you. Well, Tulama, welcome and thank you very much for joining us. From your time as Secretary General of the Pacific Islands Forum, what were your reflections of Ramsey as an example of regional security cooperation? Ramsey um, was and is uniquely Pacific. There is really no other experience uh, that matches um, the circumstances of uh, Ramsey, why it was created and what Ramsey achieved. Um, of uh, historical magnitude, uh, without question, and um, by the clear measure of its success, that is success in restoring law and order, rebuilding uh, national institutions, um, stabilizing the economy and improving essential community services, particularly uh, the critical ones, um, health and education. So it was uh, uh, Ramsey was an event of the most critical importance uh, to the life and the security of a nation um, and its people. And um, I would have to say, um, for all um, Pacific communities, uh, Ramsey would be the highest demonstration um, of the value and um, I think the true meaning of Pacific regionalism. Ramsey uh, was about uh, returning um, to Solomon Island as a normal and a far better life. Um, a life of safety and security and one which uh, held out far more promise um, for the future. Um, Ramsey had a very clear mission uh, and it was to work together with the people and the government of the Solomon Islands to build a secure, uh, well-governed and a prosperous nation. Thank you, uh, Triloma. Ramsey was endorsed at the outset and supported by the Pacific Islands Forum throughout its life. And Ramsey had representation from all forum members. How important was that regional character to the success of the mission? The involvement and participation of all forum countries, large and small, was the key. Was the key to Ramsey's success. Uh, Ramsey itself uh, is a shining example of the uh, 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 of the importance of the collective purpose 
and the uh, putting together the skills and the abilities of Pacific peoples in demonstration of the spirit of the Pacific region. Um, it also, I think, reminds us that no one country can manage their own future alone in today's world. Uh, peace and security at the regional uh, level uh, are too closely, too inextricably linked to peace and stability in respective member countries. And, and, um, and these are shared uh, interests uh, which bring um, sh uh, shared responsibility to assist um, in times of great need. Um, and, and I think it is this, the spirit um, of the Bigatawa Declaration, um, that led to the success of Ramsey. You know, the eventual closure of Ramsey was perhaps a technical thing. You know, it had to end. But what was left in its place um, was, if not lasting peace and security for the Solomon Islands and its people, then certainly the foundation for it. Um, but even more lasting, I believe, is what I have seen, um, and I've seen it around the region, of the personal and the professional relations between Pacific people of all countries and disciplines who had served in the Ramsey operations. I have seen Australians and New Zealand security professionals serving or assisting island governments in, on security matters, uh, including my own, as I have seen Samoans with high-ranking experience in Ramsey service now serving in senior police and security positions in Samoa. You mentioned, I think, the Commission of Police or, or Professor Peebles did. That's one example of a, of a, of a now senior uh, Samoan who served in Ramsey with great distinction, I think. So truly, I think Ramsey was extraordinary in the Pacific visioning and humanity historically and spiritually, I consider Ramsey a, a legacy of true Pacific regionalism. Thank you. That's been a great episode. Very interesting. In the next uh, episode of this special series celebrating the 20th anniversary of Ramsey, um, we'll uh, tell a door and talk story with uh, a number of people. Um, they include the Solomon Islands journalist, Elizabeth Sadi, uh, special Ramsey, another special Ramsey coordinator, Tim George, and of course, Samoan police commissioner and former Pacific Islands contingent commander in Ramsey. And my apologies if I mispronounce your name, is Awa Pau Longoitino Filippo. Well, thanks, Henry, and thanks, Dave, and thank you to all our viewers and listeners. We'll see you next time on this special series of Pacific Wayfinder, celebrating this 20th anniversary of Ramsey, celebrating our region united.